Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, and today I have a really fun, fun project. Uh, this is using the June Taylor Quilt As You Go pre-printed batting. It's kind of like, remember the, when we were kids, they had the paint by numbers? Well, this is literally so by numbers, and it makes this good size tote. And I thought that collection was so pretty. That's called Violet's Garden. We have some limited kits of this one. We made it again, and I think this is Homegrown Holiday. We keep making these, so you know, once you learn how to make one, it's fun to be able to make it in other fabrics. And you can just imagine if you're out Christmas shopping, how fun, it'd be a conversation starter. People would definitely be commenting on your bag. And it's, of course, great for um, not only uses for yourself, but also for gift giving. So let's just talk about what you can expect. Of course, we have some limited kits available. Other collections coming up where we'll have kits, or maybe you just wanna buy the batting kit and use your own fabric. However you wanna do that, I'm gonna talk you through all of the steps. And what your kit will look like is you have the pre-printed batting and everything is numbered. I love that. We're gonna definitely dive into that. This is gonna take up a lot of space. I'm gonna do my best to uh, kind of clean up. We might have to cut here and there so I can kind of clean up. Um, and that way you'll be able to follow along a little bit better and be able to focus on what I'm trying to show you. Inside the batting kit, of course, you'll have the pre-printed batting. You'll have your instruction sheet. You'll have an image that's going to show you uh, just some examples of the bag. And then you'll have some kind of webbing. This is the strapping that we will cover with fabric to make our handles. So our very first thing that we'll be doing from either your kit or from fabric at home is they want us to not iron. I know we're so tempted as quilters to crank up that iron all the way and iron this thing absolutely flat. And that's one of the first things they tell us not to do and it is hard to not do that. Um, so just know that when you unfold your batting you start working with this, the wrinkles will come out. And once you have everything sewn to the top, then you'll be able to iron everything. So you will be able to do that. We just have to put that off because they're saying it could lead to some distortion and some shrinking. So I appreciate that they let us know that. You're going to open up your batting. And again, because of my limited space, hey, by the way, it reminds me, I'm sewing on Aurafil today. I'm excited about that. Um, you've been seeing confetti thread. We are going to give Aurafil. So far, I've been sewing with that today. I love it. This is the Carrera set. It's got the black, the black, the gray, and the white. And you know what? For piecing, that's all we need, really, ever. It's when you start doing top stitching that maybe you're going to be looking at some other colors. And of course, we have Aurafil in a lot of colors. Unfold the batting. And one of the first things that they have us do here, I'm just going to show you this kind of in general. And yes, those wrinkles stress me out too, but I've kind of been able to get over that. And as I start to work with it, it relaxes. You see, this is the footprint for the bag right here. They want us to uh, cut about a half inch away to an inch away. And that's where I'm using my creative grid two and a half inch ruler. And that's because also later on, all of these strips that we're gonna be cutting for the bag for the main portion are two and a half, makes this ruler perfect. It's a perfect mission for this. So you're just gonna cut that out, including kind of inside the notches here. For the two straps, you'll be cutting exactly on that blue drawn lines right here and put that aside. So just so I can get a little bit of space, I'm gonna take that off the table. I've already trimmed up a piece um, and you'll want to have your backing fabric. Of course, our instructions let us know what size that is. They say use a, um, for both the backing and the lining, to use a piece that's 24 inches by 35 inches. And so, what you'll do is you'll get your batting that you've already trimmed, and you can just either pin the backing on, or you could spray baste that. I use a little bit of spray basting on that. And that's what we have here. Now, the June Taylor Sophie tote batting has been around a long time. And I've noticed there's a couple generations of instructions. I think there was one in 2018, one in 2020. 
the earlier one in 2018 did not mention sewing just on the inside of the solid blue line that's all around the perimeter of the bag, but the newer generations of instructions from 2020 um, mentioned that. We, we did not do that with um, in our initial bag when we made that because we made that a while ago, but with this one we had some different instructions and we've added that. Really I think um, if, they, if they mention it, go ahead and just do it. And that's what we just sewed just on the inside of that line. And so now we're at this point where we're looking at our batting straight on. And this is the sew by numbers that we're talking about. So for our first row, they have us, and actually for one through eight, the instructions having us cut our pieces to 22 inches. Another thing I wanted to point out, the older generation of the June Taylor Sophie so had you cutting the strips to a slightly shorter length. I think the safest course of action to do is just measure your batting. So if you measure that with your um, two and a half inch ruler, that's gonna serve us so well on this project. We can see that on this particular batting, that's measuring, hard for me to see, about 21 and a quarter. So you might wanna just do that really before you cut your strips. So that's just something that I wanted to throw out there. And if your strips extends just a little bit onto this here, you could either trim that up to be the exact measurement or know that when you put this piece on, you'll have your outer guidance right here to know where to lay that strip. More of that to come. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's start back to strip one. And we're going to look at in our kit, in the Sophie Tote kit for Violet's Garden, we give you this layout diagram that matches this right here so that you can say, okay, I see one, two, three, four, right that, that strip right there, which is right one, two, three, that's my center strip. You, this is just a suggested arrangement. You could put your strips anywhere that you want. I think I hit them. So for your first strip, You'll just lay that down exactly in that channel. And you want to pin that in place. Now I normally am working with my patchwork pins, but I find that in this project, the longer fine pins from Clover are working better. And they let us know to pin kind of shallow. So all we're trying to do is just keep this thing from moving while we sew the next strip on. If you don't go all the way through the back of the fabric, um, that's okay. And it's even recommended that you kind of go shallow. We're just trying to get things to not move while we go from here to the sewing machine. So that's going to be our first strip. We just lay it down. Strip number two will come next. And as we can see from this, this is kind of that pink, uh, pretty tossed floral that will go here, but in order for that to go here, we need to place the strips right side together, sew our quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then we're going to flip. So it's gonna be a little bit easier maybe for you if I turn that. And I can see that strip's a little bit long and it's going to kind of come into this lane 15. It's not a big deal. If you're worried about what I call show through, maybe there's a white strip here and you don't want anything popping up, trim this strip. But if this is a darker strip or you're not worried about this fabric when it's laid out like this, kind of creeping into that lane, if you're not worried about that showing through the fabric on top, just let it be. Because you see these lines that extend out beyond, that's why they're there, they're lineup lines. So I wanted to mention that to you. Right side together. Let's pin that and we'll take that to our machine and we will sew a quarter inch all the way down. And notice I have left my chrome needles, my kind of these are the uh, jeans, denim, they're called the Schmetz. 100 over 16. I certainly don't need them yet, but later on when we start dealing with that strapping and layers and bulk, this is my friend here. I want a sturdier needle to go through the density, but it's okay to use it now. So I just wanted to mention it. 
Let's go sew our quarter inch seam allowance. Now we would normally, we're quilters, right? I would normally be grabbing for my iron. I want to do that so badly. And they're like, don't do that. <laughs> they're like, do not press this yet. So we have something called a roll and press. I'm just going to finger press this kind of out that direction. And the roll and press is a way to be kind of a pseudo iron, iron I guess I would call it. And that just kind of gets that seam going over there. And we could again just pin that so that when we come down this lane, we're ready for that. That's not going to roll back on us when we get ready to sew something to it. So I'm just going to put those down there because I'm here. Let me turn this around so you're seeing it from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You might say, why don't they just stack the numbers over on this side? By alternating the sides, keeps it keeps it from bowing. If you've ever done that where you've done piecing and you've started a strip and you added a strip and you added a strip, it starts tipping. I don't know why that happens. It just does. It's a thing. So that's why they are alternating. So try to keep that rhythm um, and not be tempted to just go do that side and then go do that side, which would work, but it kind of defeats the purpose. Now over here on three, that's where this is going to be. So we know in order to achieve that, we're going to place those right side together and pin and we'll go sew a quarter inch seam allowance. I'll just go do that. And then when we come back again, I'm going to roll and press this and I will talk you through the rest of putting your strips together. Okay, so that lane is on. I've used my roll and press and you'll continue on this for, you know, left, right, left, right. It helps uh, alleviate distortion. That's why they kind of have you left, right, left, right. Once that's done, you have your pieces up here that you'll be putting those into position. There's four of those. The instructions will give you what size to cut that fabric. Again, you might want to just measure that to make sure that, you know, that's the length that you should be cutting it for your piece of batting. Same with this strip here and here. Those will go on next. And if you have any of these strips that are kind of creeping into that lane, like we talked about before, you do have some lineup lines. That's why they have the blue extend beyond out here so that you have that visual target of where to lay that strip and then flip it. And then you're doing the same on both ends. Now I've done um, one in advance where I sewed all of that together because I want to be able to show you the whole bag and I know it's, these are longer videos and you know, it's worth hanging in there for that because then when you get ready to make your own tote, you're not wondering, how do I do this actually? So this is what that will look like right here. Remember how I said that some of the earlier instructions um, had you stitch on the inside of the solid line, just on the inside, all the way through from the batting to the, to the, um, I guess that's really the lining of that. I think I've used the word backing and please forgive me. I'm so used to quilting. This is the lining of this bag. There is no backing. It's, it's a bag. Anyway, you know, if you're using the old, maybe you have this, maybe the batting, you already have it at home and your, your instructions don't mention stitching on the inside of that line. It's okay. It's kind of optional really. So we did not do that. I think I had an older set of instructions because we've been making this bag for so long. I just grabbed those instructions, but I see the instructions I have with me today. Do mention sewing just on the inside of this. And we would have done that earlier on, of course, before we start laying our strips on. If you didn't want to do that, or maybe you um, are at this place and forgot to do that, it's not a big deal. Our pattern does say, okay, now, when the um, tote's been completely sewn, we could certainly do some decorative stitching. I love that. We all have these beautiful stitches. You could be going down these lanes and adding whatever detail if you even want to do that. After that, it says pin all loose pieces on top of the tote to hold those in place. So if you have anything that's kind of flopping around and you feel like you want to pin that, they mentioned to turn the project over 
And if you did have the stitching down like we did on the other one that one that I brought up earlier, you're going to you're going to put your ruler down and cut just to the outside of that line. For us, I don't have that, but you know what I do have? These lines right here. So I'm going to grab my two and a half inch ruler and I'm just going to grab my rotary cutter and those are my lineup. Just like that. And I'm just going to keep trimming my project. See, let me, I want you to see this. I want, to, I want you to see what I'm looking at. See this right here and you see that line right there? Even though that strip is really completely covering up that solid line, I have my lineup point here and right there. My fabric is nice and smooth. Use your, use your ruler to smooth the fabric out just like that. Line up here and here, and then let's trim. That's why I'm saying I just don't really think that if you didn't stitch that line, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal because I have a lot of great places that I can line up. Here, you know, I'm just going to smooth that out. If I didn't get all the way to the line, that's fine. We're going to be just fine. And we'll just keep squaring this up. The next thing that they mentioned to do, is I want to put, uh, pull your attention to that one, is they say top stitch an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch around the perimeter of the tote to secure the layers. We're going to be sewing a half inch seam allowance. So it's okay to do a quarter of an inch all the way around. And you're just trying to secure those layers together. Um, it says the outer edge may be surged or zigzag stitched. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna keep trimming that up uh, with my uh, ruler and rotary cutter. And then I am gonna go ahead and I think I'm just gonna put a zigzag stitch in there and secure that. And then we'll move on to the next step of making our bag. I was just about ready to go surge this edge, actually zigzag it, and I realized this hadn't been cut out. I use these Bordeaux scissors for that, and I'm just cutting on my line. If I have to peek underneath that just to touch, that's where I could see if I did sew just inside the line, that might be helpful. And if you did, you would be trimming this thing from the back instead of from the front where I'm doing that. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, I'll keep trimming this side. I'm gonna go zigzag this up and then we'll move on to finishing up our bag. So now that my corners are boxed, one of the things they recommended in the pattern is that you could do kind of a zigzag here again because this will be on the inside of the bag. You could maybe use some pinking shears, whatever you want to do to be able to close that or to kind of not really close it, but more, I guess, kind of make it look a little tidier on the inside of the bag. Now we get to turn it to the right side and see our progress so far. Really love that. You can easily get in there with your fingers to press out those corners. You could use a pointer. I don't think you need to necessarily. You can get in there with your hands. The next step will be to prepare a binding strip. It's just a little bit longer than a width of fabric. They have us cutting a two and a half inch by 46 inch long. I think it's that measurement. I better double check that real quick. 46 inch long. Um, uh, binding strip and that's going to go along the top here. We're now going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to kind of start, you know, kind of anywhere really and I'm going to leave a tail. I, I need to leave that open so that I can close this in the end. So maybe I'll put that about right here and I'm just going to clip that in place. I'm going to take this part of my sewing uh, kind of that table off of my machine that's going to make it a little bit easier for my uh, bag to kind of go or rotate around that. So I'll leave a good sized tail here as well as in the end. And I'm going to give you some ideas of maybe how you can join those two strips up. So I'll go ahead and uh, pin this in position. I'll be at the machine. We'll sew this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to leave a big gap here. And you know what I realized? If you're going to cut two strips, join them and cut it to 46, don't, don't cut it. Keep them longer. It's going to give you more options. I cut mine to 46. It's going to make the step I'm going to show you next actually more difficult. 
But um, so like I said, if, a, if you're cutting two strips, two and a half by width of fabric, join them together and just leave them long, even if you cut them to like 55. Um, we'll make it work with our 46, but it's just a pointer to uh, leave yourself a longer length and I'm gonna leave myself a big opening. This whole thing's gonna be open right now. All right, let me lay that down. Let's secure that stitch. And here we go. There's a lot of ways to close a binding, join binding strips, I should say. Here's just one technique. I'm gonna actually bring this on top of my pressing mat and rotate this toward myself so that, and I'm gonna try to keep my head out of the way. So these are going to join and you wanna have it where they have about the same length. So I'm kind of just adjusting that. That looks about right. Where I'm just gonna fold that back on top of itself as if this was still it was laying it's just as smooth as if I had sewn it down. Lay it on top of itself and give it a really good press. And then the same for the other side, smoothing it down. And those two are going to touch, but not overlap. And again, we'll press. When seams meet blunt side to blunt side, it's a butt joint on the diagonal. Um, we've done that many times. It's a different join, but the idea is that we're trying to create a visual um, continuity of our binding strip and not have it be very obvious where the strip kind of went together. This, so this is just one approach. Now we've got this very strong crease in here and it's almost a little bit easier if I kind of crease it so that they're all kind of moving in the same direction. So I'm just going to repress that. Again, I'm trying my best to do this and keep my head out of the way <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. But the gist of it is that we need to bring that, these two right sides together along that line line them up you need to kind of fold your bag to give it some relief and we're trying to sew down there that's why i wanted to have this crease and if i crease this one this way one kind of just sits in the other so let me, let me just press this so it'll be a little more obvious what i'm talking about in just a moment Just like that. That kind of creates this little valley. You see why having a longer strip is helpful? Having the shorter strip is, is, is more difficult, but we'll, we'll get there. And now we're gonna pin that. This is where I'd probably use my fine, extra fine patchwork pins. I don't have them with me right now. So we're just gonna pin that. I might even sew it from this side. I'm not sure which. I'm just trying to create, reduce this tension. There we go. That helped by moving the bag. We just want to sew right down that line. I'll keep pinning this. We'll go sew that. I don't want it to move. I'm just going to pin it. It's not pretty, but it's functional. Let's go do this right now. So we'll sew just straight down that line. Now, before we cut anything away, let's check. Let's see if this is actually going to work. And we can see that once that's trimmed away, we have this nice continuous strip. So we, we've, done, we've done a good job. So that's very, very happy about that. So now I'll just take this to my table 
And it doesn't have to be a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. I might even take a little bit of a bigger seam allowance. And now I definitely want to press that open so it lies a little bit flatter. For that reason, when you actually join those two, you might want to shorten your stitch length. Stitch length because if you're going to also be opening it, it's just it just putting in more thread, good idea. Very good idea. Now we'll press that. Lay that on the bag. I'm going to close that quarter inch seam there. Just clip that. I'm just going to hold that in position. Then I'm going to show you. Just close that up. Then, then I'll just flip over on this side of the bag. You're just going to roll that binding, just like a quilt, if, you've, if you're a quilter, to the inside like this and clip it so that the white side is on the bottom, the colored side is toward you. You can see all the pretty colors. And you're just wrapping that around. Then you can either tack that down by machine or you can now grab a coordinating thread and you'll stitch in the ditch where you're catching the front and going all the way to the back where I would have, uh, I'd probably put the, uh, peach color in the front and a green in the back. I don't think the white, you know, I'm just going to sew with that today. I do want to put the binding down and secure it. So you get the idea that I am going to come back and close that. That's happening. But I want to show you a little bit about stitching in the ditch. And it kind of just using your, your mini wonder clips, this is a great time for them. Let me show you why I like the mini wonder clips right now. Sometimes when I'm trying to keep two things together, I want as big of a footprint as I can get. And I use the large wonder clips, these. But right now, um, I mean, they both would work, but I, I want to get as close as I can to this before I have to release this clip. And you can see this is just a bigger footprint. It takes up more area. So anyway, I have both, whenever I do binding, I do the bigger ones. When I do smaller projects, I'm, I tend to use my minis. So when you do stitch in the ditch, again, I'm going to take this plate off of my um, machine. You'll just come in. You'll make sure you're well clipped to the back because you don't want to miss this backing. And you're just trying to get that open. So you can get that thread right inside that valley. You can even kind of pull it back just a touch. Just like that. You just kind of keep kind of pulling it back so that when that fabric relaxes, here I'll cut that so you can see. When it relaxes, you don't really see it in there. Keep in mind that that's a white. Do you see that? It's right in there, but because the fabric relaxes, it's really hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the binding on the top of the back. Um, and then when we come back, we'll work on putting on our straps. We'll first make the straps. And I've got one done, and then we'll make one together, and we'll finish up our bag. So I have my binding sewn on, and now we're ready to move on to our straps. Now I've made one in advance so you could see what that looks like. It's a really cool construction. Our pattern has us cutting two different fabrics, as you can see, for each one of our straps. The wider cut, the two and a half by 34, is whatever fabric's gonna be behind. The fabric that's in the front, that'll be cut to two inches, not the two and a half. How do we get here? How do we make this thing? Remember how I had you um, cut out the main part of our bag, and then we had the extra two uh, pieces that said bat, um, straps. So you've cut, cut those out exactly on the line. I only have one because the other one is already inside here. So we'll grab that along with, let me try to move my instructions out of the way. Always trying to make space here. 
I think I can just move my pressing mat up there and that'll be a little easier for you to see that because I know that sometimes I'm literally in the way of the overhead camera. So we'll grab our fabric that we've cut. Let's just double check that we actually did uh, cut that to 33. And you know, I realize I'm gonna need this. One of the very first steps they have us do is they have us fold the ends of that inward by a half of an inch. That's one of our very first steps here. And so I've got my iron heating up. Whenever I have to fold in something and I need to, it to be a very precise measurement, and this is a very precise measurement on this bag, I'm gonna use my hot ruler and I'm gonna use my line right there. Let me turn that around so you can see it. We have a quarter, half, three quarter, one, all the way up to two and a half. I love that you cannot damage this ruler with heat. You couldn't do it if you tried. I've tried. <laughs> I have tried that. I love to put these things through their pace. So when I bring them to you, I vetted it. You can just know it's good to go. I'm not going to bring you stuff you're not going to enjoy using. Go ahead and fold that by a half an inch. And I love that I don't have to try to guess what a half an inch is because these need to be lining up just perfectly on the ends, and that's gonna start off with precise cutting of the strip and folding that in by half an inch. We'll repeat that step on the other end of um, our strap here, and you're, end, you're gonna end up doing the same thing with the striped fabric. So I'll just, when we get to doing that portion, um, I'll just quickly do that, but it'll be the exact same half inch You can imagine if you try to use a plastic ruler, first off, you've got a weird ridge, it wouldn't work. And then of course you damage that. So super cool notion from Clover. All right, let's put that up there. Now we'll have that wrong side up and we're going to place our batting in here. And absolutely, you can see that batting will not go the full distance, let me see what this is, it's probably 32, 31 it looks like. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's right. Whatever it is, is what it is, right? It's not supposed to tuck under because we don't want batting interfering when we're trying to sew this together. That's going to be hard enough as it is without adding batting to the equation. So this was very intentional on June Taylor's part to make sure that that batting is coming short of where that, that uh, fold is. Now, when we were trying to put this thing together, we were like, uh, how do I fold that? The goal is to fold this fabric over here and this fabric over here. And pinning was not working. We tried all kinds of things. You could do a glue stick. I think it's a little bit on the messy side. What we found is we've got two different types of kind of double-sided tape. We've got the Wonder Tape from Dritz and we have the Bowen um, double face, again, kind of basically double-sided tape. I'm just gonna grab this one and I'm just going to lay a, a lane, I guess I would call it, as best I can, kind of just trying to parallel that edge all the way down to the end of my batting strip and I'll trim that. And I'm gonna do it again on the opposite side This became, oh, it's like another pair of hands. It was wonderful. And this is very sticky. You know, you're, sometimes we do DIY or, or quilts or whatever you're sewing, and you're just like, I, you got your elbow down there. <laughs> you're just trying to secure something. This is what I'm talking about. Run your hand down there, press it really good, because when you pull off the top, if this is not fully secured to your batting, you're just gonna pull this tape right up. So you wanna have that nice and smooth. And I find if I kind of just push it back onto itself, all you gotta do is get this thing started. Now hopefully I can get it started here now that I pushed it down so hard. I definitely got that down. There we go, here it comes. Just like that. It's 
going to be easier if that's if you're actually my head's out of the way if it's over here now you're just bringing that edge wants to stick to me just try to center it this the batting in between that you don't need to get too specific just ballpark it and just bring that edge down and just continue just like that all the way down we will then let me keep that folded just like that do the same thing and we're going to fold this edge up so that they meet in the middle okay that's how you prepare that and i'll finish that up off camera with the strapping it's the same thing remember how i said that you're going to tuck that in by um a half inch here you're going to lay the strapping down lay your bead of tape here you're going to fold that down then i actually put my bead of tape on my fabric so that when i because this one doesn't meet in the middle it actually overlaps like that so that's why you really can't just pre kind of load that put one side down in fact let me just do that one let me just do that with you real quick you saw you see how that's going to go together but i want to show you this one so you're seeing how this works because it's so slick it's really the best way to get that thing nice and even and you're not fighting with it i'm a messy i'm a messy sewer guys i'm, I'm here to confess it <laughs> i i was saying how um I once went to a quilt retreat in my space. It was crowded at this quilt retreat. This was many years ago when we could go to quilt retreats, right? Unlike this current pandemic we're in, I had like this much space. I'm like, there's no chance. I'm just a messy quilter. I'm here to, I'm here to admit that. Um, my notions are everywhere. Okay, just like that. Here. When we get ready to prepare this one, just like before, we'll lay our strapping down. Make sure your strapping is cut down. You don't, again, you do not want this down in here when you're trying to sew. You're gonna break a needle. Um, I've got a, a size 100 needle in there. Even that could definitely break. This has been cut to 30 inches. So it's here, well inside. Make sure you're balancing that so that you have that same margin on both ends. Lay your tape down. Whoop, too close to the edge. Just like that. Again, press it really well, really well. The hardest part is just getting it started. There we go. Okay, we'll lay that out. We know this is super sticky, be careful. Lay that out good and flat. You could even kind of put it along um, a line on your mat. I'm gonna scoot it up so my head's out of the way as best I can. So sorry if it's in the way. Get that right in the middle. And again, the same amount kind of on both, the same kind of gap. You might even wanna start in the middle and almost kind of work your way out. I don't know, just an idea. And I'm, I'm with my, this particular fabric, it's very easy to kind of almost angle it. I have to like, here's my stripe, here's my stripe, kind of try to keep lining them up so that I stay true, so to speak. Now that's something that, that just happened because now I'm stuck to this. This thing's gonna wanna flip on me. Once you have one side done, I've kind of just used my little <laughs> paperweight of my 
a pin, magnetic pin cushion. that in there like that. Now, that's when I was saying that, let's see here, did I fold that down evenly? Kind of. I got a little wonky. I think I can live with it though. This is where you'll lay down the next bead on the actual fabric. Because that's where it's going to be landing. Oop, see that? I didn't push it down hard enough. Then when I started to pull the top off, the whole thing came. You know, I think what I'll do is I think I'll start down here. Okay, there we go. Finally. Woo! Again, it's gonna wanna it's gonna wanna roll on you, no problem. Just scoot that fabric. There we go. So you kind of just establish something. And then once you have that, kind of just, there you go. Now everything else kind of just stabilizes. You just want it to be in there nice and tight. There we go, really tight. Just like that. We gotta keep that fold in there. It keeps wanting to come out. We gotta keep that in there. Once you have this just like you like it, it's a little bit of fussying, as you can see, to get everything just so. I went and took it to the iron and smoothed everything out. So everything was nice and even. And, and, and just so that presses out nice and smooth as well. And we can see we have this gap down here where there's no strapping. That's good. We want that. So you get the idea. Just kind of smooth everything out all the way down. And then, of course, this one, as we talked about, that strapping, we're going to remove our double-sided tape. That's going to come like here. Now we place these with the wrong side up. And our fold is going to be down. This is, we're going to pretend. In fact, let me just go do that. It's going to be, I don't have to pretend. Let me just go do that, and then I'll come right back, and we're going to place those right side together. Excuse me, wrong sides together, and we'll sew that strap. So I have everything pressed out as well as I can with these kind of, uh, the smooth side down, raw edges up, with our strap, the forward one, it's harder to tell, but make sure where that overlapping kind of join is, is right sides together. Now put these and make sure they're the same length. If for any reason, one of them, like if this is slightly longer than the other, the easiest way to do that is to just open this up and increase your seam allowance. If it's just a little bit longer, it's not a big deal, because it's part of that's going to be hidden in our next step, which I'm going to be getting to. But go ahead and line them up so that one is stacked right on top of the other and kind of going right down the middle. And that's where I like to use those wonder clips. So I'm just going to clip 
These minis seem to work really well for me really throughout this whole project. And we'll clip all the way down. And as you can see, we just came back, and that's where the chrome needle again really shines. You're going through all the fabric, all the strapping, all the batting, and we just came in and sewed straight down. All right, I'll go prepare that. And then when I come back, I want to talk to you about how we uh, attach our straps to our bag, and then we'll be completely done. So we have both of our straps ready to go, and we're in our final steps of our bag. And you can see they talk about a measurement of five inches from the seam on either side. You're going to be repeating these steps for both, both straps, of course, so your bag is nice and even. I'm just going to mark that line right there. And we'll, we're going to be attaching these right beneath our binding. Just like that. We'll place our strap with the pretty side toward the bag. And I'm just gonna, I just have that really just kind of right to that line. And I've used a, a friction pen because it'll erase with heat. You could use chalk if you're worried about something showing. I'm just going to clip that in place too so nothing moves. Repeat that over here. Make sure you don't take a little tuck or a, uh, not a tuck, but kind of a turn. And we will go just on the inside of that line. Boy, we're going through a lot here. They talk about, oh, let me back that down just a touch. We want to be right, just right underneath that binding. I see how I have a drawn line here. This is where I can feel that webbing stops. That's where I want to stitch. And they talk about that in here. They talk about um, stitch strap in place close to the interior webbing. So I'm going to probably be just on the other side of that. I don't want to catch that webbing right now. We'll take our plate off again, on and off with this project, with that table. I should have moved that and go back and forth on this a couple of times. And let's repeat over here. Now, while we're still here on the close-up photography, you'll just bring that strap up just like this. We can even do this one. It's a little bit closer to the camera, I think. And it's gonna, we're going to lay that strap right on top of where it just was attached. Now this is where your machine is going to strain a little bit. Don't go too fast. And we're just going to sew from edge to edge right beneath where that binding is, right there. This is kind of that visual extension. If you want to put an X in here, by all means, whatever you want to do, we're just trying to secure that strap back on itself. A lot of work. <laughs> you can hear the machine working hard. That's where that size 100 needle is so important. Okay, then as you already know, we would just flip our bag over, repeat our steps, measure in your five inches, 
starting beneath where your binding is and attach. So how cute is this bag? Isn't that great? It's big. It's perfect for the grocery store. So many people are trying to be really conscious about not using plastic bags. This makes shopping fun, right? So, hey, I know this has been a longer video. I never want to skip a step so that when you get your batting kit and maybe use your own fabric or one of our kits, you know you can just follow along and absolutely be able to make your own bag for yourself or as a gift. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon on another Shabby Fabrics video.